Welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins Governance Board. It's November 28th, 2022. Uh, welcome to new members of the board, Uli Hoffner, or new members of the ward, board beginning December 3rd. Uli Hoffner and Alex Brandis. Uh, special thanks to Gavin and to Evelina who will be exiting the board and we hope will stay deeply involved in Jenkins and continuing forward with us. Topics I had, news, action items, elections, governance board meeting time and date, and CDF outreach reboot. Oh, oh, and then we had the usual topics, which is uh, CDF topics from Oleg, if he's available, and then community forum, and that's from Gavin Morgan. Any other topics that need to go on the agenda for today? Uh, you skipped that part, but uh, the governance meeting time would be a topic I, it's important Great. for yeah. me. And uh, I just want to be sure we have it on the agenda. We will be yeah. sure we address it. Absolutely, Uli. Very good. Thank you. So that one's on the agenda. We'll make sure we get to it. Any other topics that we need to add to the agenda? Okay, then let's go ahead with with our beginning. So on by way of news, the one item of news I had is this Wednesday we have 2.375.1 with thanks to Alex acting as our release lead. Uh, thanks very much, Alex. And uh, it looks good. Uh, testing, my testing has been running for almost a month with 2.375, etc. And the release candidate for two plus weeks. So looks good. Any concerns from anyone else about what's coming out in that release? Okay, next item then is action items. Action items, we have several that carried over from last time. Uh, only to follow up on this, I had failed to do it last time. We'll do it this time. Create an empty agenda entry for the next meeting after the end of each meeting. Uh, we're also, we discussed in last governance board, switching from the concept of subprojects and special interest groups to a single concept working groups. And I'll submit a poll request to www.jenkins.io to match that. Uh, Oleg's got the action item to send a proposal to Rick to retire the Chinese Jenkins site because it is badly out of date. Then Gavin and I have the action item to archive the governance meeting notes to a GitHub repository for permanent archive because if you look at the scroll bar on this Google Doc, you'll see that this is hundreds of is, is over a hundred pages long. It's becoming unwieldy, so we want to switch it to a, a more more permanent location than Google Docs. Kevin Martins has the action item to switch from using a Google a Google mailing group mailing list for Jenkins Docsig to use community.jenkins.io. He's accepted that and will work on it. Um, Can I ask? question about the topic before because yes. uh, I think you are publishing the agenda after the meeting in our community. So I'm wondering why we sh should re record the same thing in this document additionally. Oh, and so, I think I think the answer there is archival copies uh, are not in archival copies are not a meaning meaning historical copies from years ago are not would, on community. I would say there's, there's two things. There's one is that uh, things community is not really a hard concrete source of truth, and also we don't have all the old meetings. So anything before like March or April isn't in isn't archived anywhere but this Google Doc. Yes, I understand for the old things, but starting from now, I think it would make sense to just use the agenda. And after we publish the agenda to the community, there is no need to let it in this document here. 
or why do we have two places where we store the same thing? This is something I'm not understanding. That wasn't discussed. We only discussed doing the, the older ones. Okay, good. Great. Okay, so so the, the concept still holds. We could consider community.jenkins.io the, the archive for the future, but we need an archive of the history. And that archive, a GitHub repository is not bad. Right, good. Thanks, Gavin. Any other any other items on that one before we go forward on other action items? So just six. Do you do we did you create a repo or am I creating a repo? How are we splitting this up? Uh, I I haven't I haven't created one and either you or I can do it. I'm I'm fine with either. I actually forgot how to make action items in Google Doc. Isn't that how you do it? Uh, almost. You go like this. We, oops. Highlight. Click. Okay. Like that. Ah, email. Yeah, unfortunately, I can only assign it to one. That's fine. I'll take care of it. Great. All right. Okay. Anything else on that one before we go forward? Okay, next was a proposal to create a documented a statement on Jenkins.io about web application server support. Did and you see Jesse's reply three minutes ago? I did. I was very impressed. Um, on the one hand, we've got quite a number of users who are saying, hey, it works for me. And on the other hand, we've got core developers who say, none of us test it, none of us verify that it works on these other containers. Um, we're not willing to support it. And Jesse Glick just posted a note saying, and there are some crucial things like, um, like WebSockets that are expected to not work. Uh, so, so there's, it's an open point for discussion. It feels like it's, it needs more discussion though I think a pull request may be the way to do that discussion unless here in the governance board you feel like I need to propose a JEP officially dropping support of the thing. Or uh, should we do the discussion I, in? Go ahead. I think on the download, you can go on the download page and say uh, anything other than the one that we're using is not tested. And then uh, it sounds like they're based on the previous JEP, there should be a JEP to fully to kill the old one, the other ones, right? I think those are two different problems. Good, good point. I like that. Okay, so we can state the current situation, right? What is and is not tested, what is tested and what is not tested, and then the end of a separate task to decide the future. That's good because I, I like that. That's one that. Basel had guided me on previously when we were describing operating system support. Uh, his preference was, let's say what we actually test in automation. And that way people know, hey, this is, is covered by automated tests. If it's not covered by automated tests, we should state so. Good. All right. Thank you. Any other discussion on the web application server support? So the Tomcat, the Glassfish, the WebSphere, et cetera. Which, which servers are people still using that we want to consider dropping support for? Is it just Tomcat and uh, Wildfly or are there others? Tomcat and Wildfly are the two most popular that, I, that I've, I've seen. Gavin, have you seen mention of others? Uh, I think I might have seen Glassfish once. Do we ha is that part of metrics? Do we have that data? I'm not. No. I'm not aware of it being part of metrics. Is is that gettable? Could we expand the uh, telemetry stuff to report that information? I'm see why not. Sure. Um. 
I was going to say also from the so we we're going to do one PR that just makes sure we state what the current state is. Um, mm -hmm. It's probably worth mentioning on there that saying unless we find a maintainer, um, it's going to get uh, no, that's worse. That's bad. It's, never mind. Well, I think stating the current situation is is honorable and fair, right? I did. I, I was thinking about like, do we want to write down unless we find a maintainer, it's going to get worse. But that feels gross, <laughs> and I don't want to state that out loud. Right. That we. I don't think we need to state the current situation. Plus, offer the threat. The threat will come as by virtue of the separate task to decide the future of web application server support. Because I, I think Jesse's right that if we don't support WebSocket, and there are probably other things we don't support, and main and our core developers don't develop on it or or test it, it's tough to claim support for it. Right. It's tough to argue that it should be supported even. So Mark, for that list of um, support, for that support matrix, were you considering something like what we do for the Linux support matrix where there's three levels, um, supported patches considered and unsupported? Was that the structure that you were thinking of using? That was support? the structure I was considering. And what Jesse's, Jesse's comment back was, hey, I th he thinks that there's there really only we support it, we, we test it, we support it, and everything else. And, and that's where I think there's some discussion, because I, I was thinking three tiers, and the way Jesse described it, maybe, maybe what I can do is show Jesse's description, or we could we could have people read it separately. It's a post to community.jenkins.io. Well, um, so I think his description is effectively two tiers, where there's only supported and unsupported. But I think the, I think a, a three-tier system is needed for no other reason that a lot of people are already using this. Mm. And it would be unfair to them to uh, to move them from, I think I think the status quo is in fact three tiers and it would, it would be unfair to collapse the second and third without some prior notice, which is kind of what we were hinting at with the concept of having a separate task to decide the future of Web application, like to me, that task feels like collapsing tiers two and three, which is the status quo. Right. And I I don't think that's a bad idea, but I think that would need to be accompanied by communication over some long period of time, like warning people that they're going from being patches considered into being completely unsupported. Um, yeah, I, I I like that. Go ahead. I think it's worse than that. I think that Jeff that. Or not the non-existent Jeff would be to remove two and three entirely, like only support. Uh, right, right. No, we're 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 talking about the same thing because yeah, okay. Tier three is unsupported. So, oh yeah, uh, but I think Jesse's point was that like Tomcat would be flat out dropped. Yeah, but for now, yeah, I think before that even happens, I mean that's part of the Jeff is how to how to deal with it, but like uh, administration monitor to say, hey, you're on an unsupported container, uh, you know, in the future, this will go away, that kind of thing. Yeah. But for now, I think the big thing is we get form topics and now I've identified two problems with Tomcat alone and we have nothing to point to and be like, here's some known problems, you know, this is why you shouldn't do anything like that. Even if it's just a blog post would be probably good enough. Right. So I, th I think tier one would obviously be Jetty in the form of Winstone. And then I think tier two, which is you know patches considered, I think that would be um, that would be using Tomcat or Wildfly, maybe that third one, maybe Glassfish, in with, with all of the with, with all of the the asterisks, all the prerequisites, like use the right version of Java EE and set the Jenkins home the right way and. By the way, WebSocket doesn't work, and all, all of the asterisks. I think that would be tier two. Um, in other words, we don't test this, but patches are welcome if if you want to document this or if you think it should be improved somehow. And that and and that's kind of matches our Linux policy, right, Mark? It does. Those are yeah. the those are the three kinds of layers. It's tier one is hey, we test it with automation and. We expect it to continue working. Tier two, we don't test it with automation, but we're willing to consider other people's proposals to patch something. And tier three, 
vendor doesn't support it, we therefore flatly will not accept any yeah, patch so to do anything for it. I think tier three in this context is like using Java EE, uh, the, the wrong version of Java EE, which we just don't support at all. Um, right. Or any other servlet container besides, you know, those two that we met, those two or, two or three that we just mentioned. Um, does, that, does that seem like a, a good um, analog to the Linux policy? Yes. You know. So, Gavin, does that, um, is having a clear statement like that, do you think that would be sufficient to, um, a lot to clarify the situation for users? Or is there more that you were looking yeah. for? Uh, honestly, even if it was on the downloads page and says we only test uh, Jetty, that'd be good enough for me. Okay. Yeah, and I'm I'm prone to. So I'll I can I can if if the this three tier pattern doesn't doesn't get agreement from people, I'll certainly submit a second pull request with the stating that we don't don't test because at least that's describing it. I like the three tier because we've already got Windows, Linux, and what is one other? Oh, and Java versions that are on the downloads page with, with a matching page that talks about what we do and don't support or what we do and don't test. Anything else on the applica web application server support topic? Okay, any action items I had missed? The next topic is elections. So welcome Uli, welcome Alex, uh, new board members beginning December 3rd. Thank you very much in advance, two years with us. We're delighted, Uli returning. Alex, first time member of the board. Great to have you both. Uh, I've pr submitted a, a proposal to change the rules for next year's elections. And that proposal has gone out to the Jenkins developer list and is proposed to Jenkins.io as a pull request. Uh, any comments or concerns for, for new, uh, for others on what's proposed there or how to deal with it? Actually, I haven't read it yet. Uh, what is the proposal about? So, so today, the rules prevent a second CloudBees employee from serving on the board because we have the, the overarching rule that no, we cannot have any company have a majority of people from a single company on the board. Uh, so because Kosuke is considered affiliated with CloudBees, even though not ultimately employed by CloudBees, he counts as one as a permanent board member, I count as the other, and therefore we couldn't have a third CloudBees person. What this proposes to do is says, the per we don't count the permanent board members affiliation. We just say we may have up to two elected board members from a single company, no matter which their, what their company is. So it still keeps us that no company dominates the elected board positions, but it ignores Kosuke's position as a permanent board member in that accounting. Did but that, that answer mean that a company would have a veto against everything? No. If 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 Kosuke were somehow to to behave in a manner that was contrary to the Jenkins project and got involved, then yes, that would be the risk that Cloudbees would. Doesn't Kosuke already have veto powers? Um, yeah, I'd have to read the I'd have to read the uh, the bylaws. I don't think so. Um, my sense was that, but. But he's certainly used as a as an arbiter of of conflicts, right? When we have something where we don't come to agreement without him, he can help us resolve conflicts. Mm -hmm. Uli, back to your question: Is there a risk? I think yes. The reality is there is. Yes, a risk. I, I think there is a risk, but actually, uh, yeah, I never have seen anything bad from CloudBees right now, so. It's just a risk. Yeah, just to add something really quick to that. I mean, uh, KK has a permanent seat on the board and two CloudBees employees 
airdrop and you said two employees from one company, I wouldn't subject that necessarily to cloud piece only. Like we don't know what happens in the future. And we know from the past that not only cloud piece members were board members, see Gavin, see Oleg and other members from the past weren't CB members. And yeah, I would definitely uh, agree with Uli. I think we should keep that rule somewhat of up because there's always a risk that more people get involved in the community just to push Jenkins or just push the project into a direction we possibly don't want to go into and would be simply get overruled if there are three or even more board members by, by one company. So for context, uh, Mark's, Mark's thing is specifically uh, removing the restriction for elected. So, I mean, the all of us on this call all the board members on this call are elected, right? Koske is the only one that's not elected. So all he's suggesting is dropping that requirement from the elected or from the non-elected members. So that means Koske would not be included in the restriction of only two two members from a single company. Um, I'm going to say flat out, I don't think this should be decided tonight. I think Mark sent mm -hmm. out the email and I think it should be discussed. Um, but the other thing was uh, the reason it came up was we were having trouble finding potential uh, board member candidates. Uh, a lot of the community members right now are either not interested or from CloudBees, and that really restricted it, it was considering you could only have one CloudBees member on the board. Um, it, I think another, another factor is that Kasuke has been steadily uh, shifting his focus over the past few years since these rules were originally written. Uh, he's gone from uh, doing every single weekly release and being an executive at CloudBees into kind of shifting his focus to his new company. And we've slowly been transferring all of the repositories from his organization into the Jenkins organization. And there's been this very natural uh, shift of focus for him onto his next endeavor. So I think we, we're trying to do two things. We're trying to honor his foundational contributions in the past, but also acknowledging that the project is functioning independently in this next phase that includes less and less of Kasuke's involvement every, as each year goes by. And I think that's a very natural and healthy evolution of the project, and one which uh, Kasuke himself uh, has written about many times, that, that he's pleased to see things graduating from his nest uh, into their own blossoming um, self-sustaining system. And I, th I think he's he's personally written to me when, when he transfers repositories that he's happy to see them uh, being maintained by other people and to not be the bottleneck and to see these things kind of graduating. So I think that's another big part of this is kind of honoring Kasuke's past uh, foundational work, but also acknowledging that he's got a lot of other areas of focus now and Jenkins is fading a little bit into the background for him, which is, I think, a very healthy and natural thing to happen. Thanks. So Uli, did that did that address your comments and Alex likewise? Well, I understand the reasoning uh, and I think we can continue the discussion on the mailing list. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and I so was. Uh, I think it's not about Kosuke, it's about uh, the 50% versus 50%. So I think Kosuke did not, uh, yeah, yeah, he did not really participate in the last two or three years. So I think we only have four members. And if a company has 50% now, they can block everything. So that's uh, a thing we should be aware of. And that's for me a risk that we now have a a situation where we would like to decide something and a company can say, no, I no, we don't want to have it. And then we have a, a situation where we have two seats from one company that can say everything, no. And that's a risk for me. I'm what so I think is not so good for the project. So that, that's not changing though. I mean, right now, any other company can have two board members. The yeah, it's not is, about CloudBees, it's about every company. Yeah, but I mean, that's the case right now. Every every company that is in CloudBees is allowed to have two uh, employees on the board. 
the, the problem was because Kosuke is permanently on the board, it could, Cloud Beast can only ever have one other mm -hmm. person. And, Cloud, mm -hmm. and Kosuke is not actually in, uh, working with Cloud Beast right now. He is affiliated, yeah. but not working with. Yeah. And that's what Mark's changing, tweaking the wording to make that distinction. Yeah, but I think we, sh we should make uh, us aware that Kos Kosuke is not participating anymore. So yeah. maybe the rules should be changed anyway, because another company can come in and say, okay, let's have two seats, and yeah. then we can block every decision. So well, maybe but, we should but change I, the I, rule I, overall. I, I'm, and I think that's a, a valid point, but I'm not sure actually that that, there, that risk is real in this case, because if, let's say, an arbitrary company gets two seats on the board, that's only 50% of the four active members. If there's a conflict, Kosuke will step in as a board member and resolve the conflict. So we still mm -hmm. have we still have a safeguard in that Kosuke is a safeguard. And he, he actually was expressed his opinion on this, this proposal separately to the board in board emails and said that he, he favors this as one alternative. So so for me, I think it's actually a reasonably safe thing, even in the scenario of your, of your concern, Uli. Okay. Okay. That reminds okay. me, though. Um, do you do you, Uli and, and Alex want to send me an email, and I'll add you to the board mailing list? Just whatever email you want added to the list, I will add. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I'll send you one. And then, and then you can look at the history if you feel like it. Right. <laughs> Very, very good. Well, and and I had an action item from our meeting two weeks ago to get a see if there was a private statement that Kosuke was willing to share in terms of his involvement with CloudBees right now. I've got that statement, and I'll send it to the board for all of you to read as board members. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not something I'm ready to share publicly. I didn't get an authorization to share publicly, but I think it states in general terms his involvement. So. If, to Uli's point, we want to change the rules in terms of whether or not Kosuke is considered affiliated with CloudBees or whether or not we want some other terminology in terms of affiliated or employed by or something, that statement from Kosuke may help guide those discussions in the board. Okay, fine. Great. All right. So, so that one anything else on the proposed rule changes will continue with discussions in the mailing list allow those condition can those discussions to reach their logical conclusion whatever that may be hear the voices of, of community members and bring it up again in two weeks or in four weeks in our next board meetings great okay next item was that um elections are complete thanks to gavin and to evelina Welcome, Uli and Alex, and permission changes. So, Alex, you, or Gavin, you said send email to Gavin to become a board, a member of the board, of the board mailing list. Are there other permissions that we need to extend to board members? I don't remember. Uh, the immediate ones come to mind are GitHub teams. So both Jenkins CI and Jenkins I, uh, Infra, mostly to approve any changes to Jenkins IO that needs board approving. Um, All right, right. Technically the CL, CC and CLA stuff, but that's still messy. Um, I'm just checking to make sure I can add. I don't think I can add people to... Oh, I can't. Yeah, I think we couldn't. We can neglect the um, CLA and ICLA stuff for now, at least until we fully switch to the LFX solution. Because if I remember correctly, only Oleg has the key to actually decrypt the PDFs. So yeah, Oleg and KK are the only ones to do it. Yeah. Um, the unofficial official rule is anyone on the board approves the PR for that request, and we just we just count the PR itself as the request, and not with the contents of the request. Um, so yeah, again, once you send me an email, I'll add you to the GitHub uh, teams as well. Looks like I can do that. Um, and then the only other one that I still don't have access to is the LFX crowdfunding thing. But that's a bit of a mess because uh, crowdfunding doesn't support multiple people. 
so it's kind of awkward. Um, and then anyone who doesn't have it and wants it, uh, Mark can help you set up for Zoom. Oh, right, right. Zoom meeting, uh, password. Yes, exactly. So, so the Zoom account password. If you need to host a, host a meeting with the, yeah. the Jenkins Project Zoom account, we have a process to share that. I, I would call that optional, not a requirement for board. Right. Good. Okay. Uh, those are the only ones. Oh, and then technically one password, though we're not really using it. Oh, right. Okay. And then I'm going to keep an eye out for anything left over that I, because when I got on the board, I fought hard to make sure that I got access to the things I need to get access to, but I think that's the only immediate ones. Great. Okay, any other topics with regard to elections? Oh, actually. Uh, so, community at Jenkins IO. IO. Uh, All Black, uh, Olivia and I have been um, admins forever. Uh, I don't mind oh. staying as the admin. Um, but uh, do we want to make sure uh, all board members have like moderation access or anything like that? Um, that's more of a discussion and not something on me, but that is something I'm thinking about whether or not that should be done. I, I think at the very least board members should be able to delete a post because I think that's when you step in for any any uh, oh, gui community guidelines, whatever that word is. Uh, anytime that it has to be done, I think the board needs to be able to step in, but I don't know what you want to do with this. So I, I like that. Okay. So we, we had an episode what was it, uh, six months ago maybe, where I ultimately phrased a posting that I made to community.jenkins.io saying, I am acting as a member of the Jenkins Governing Board and I am declaring that what you did is contrary to community, our community mm -hmm. guidelines. Um, <laughs> and, and that was me acting as a board member. So I think I, I would love to have Uli and Alex also have moderator access just to, to help with that in case I miss something. Alex, Uli, what's your what's your opinion? I think this is a really good idea. So I think uh, it would be really helpful to yeah to remove posts or mark them as invalid. I think the same should happen for uh, I'm not sure Kita or I'm using not yeah, actually, I'm using Element to access uh, the Gitter mails, but... Yeah, Gitter is another issue that is hard to manage. Uh, yeah. I'm still planning on working on that project to move everything into Matrix because we have full control in Matrix. We don't have full control in Gitter. Okay. Um, I don't have admin access to Gitter. I don't know who does. I think Mark might be the only person who has Gitter access. No, I have to. You have a get actually, it admin? Actually, the Jenkins um, namespace is configured that everyone who has the right access to Jenkins CI Jenkins can administer the Gitter rooms. A kind of weird concept, but that is how it's set up. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah. Okay, well, then there's nothing to do there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, great. maybe we can create uh, another rule in the Jenkins CI organization, add people to add, and make sure this role, uh, this team can moderate guitar or something, I don't know. Definitely not something core maintainers do. No, uh, I've been looking and I have, I've been wanting to reach out, but with the, the mess that Twitter is in right now, everything's flooded. Uh, but I want to reach out to Element and be like, hey, can we can we get a sponsored small instance just to host the rooms? So we have like uh, SIG Agassi at Jenkins.io instead of at matrix.org just because I think it'll look a little bit more professional and, and clean. And then when we do that, then we'll have admin namespaces and everything. And Gitter can still join and everything like that. But I just hasn't been a priority with all the other stuff going on right now. Okay, so back to the question on moderator access. Alex, are you OK being granted moderator access to community.jenkins.io? Yeah, that sounds good to me. OK, great. So Gavin, you're, are you okay taking the action item to do that? So I can do everything on this list, ex and I think Mark's the only one that should do Zoom. So you want to assign a, a, a thing to me? Sure, you bet. Just do the top level one, yeah. Yeah, so. Okay. 
Got it. Is there anything in that list, Mark, that you don't have access to that I also should make sure you have access to? Not as far as I know. All those things, I think, uh, I think I'm, I've got them covered. I think I've got access to all of them. There we go. Okay, good enough. Anything else on the permissions topic? Okay, next topic then, governance board meeting time and date. So what I was thinking of doing is just sending out a uh, mark to send a, uh, what do you call it, a poll is there a, a, a better way to send polls? I'm used to using, I forget the, the service I use, but some service that does that. I was just going to send do it with Doodle or something like that. Yeah. Do, that's it, Doodle, yes. I was going gather, no, that's a different thing. Yeah, gather, no, that's a different thing. Right, right. Trying to remember the products I use. I use, a, use a Doodle poll to uh, ask board members and regular attendees to give their, their opinion on which times would work, which days would work, et cetera. Does that, is that okay for everyone or would you prefer something different? No, it's fine. Okay. I so guess I think of the time zones, we have Europe and US. Yeah, so we've got Gavin, Gavin and Basel, who are both on the U.S. West Coast, all the way to Uli, you and Alex, and Oleg, who are in, I think it's Central European, right? That you're yeah. Central European time? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Anything else on governance board meeting time and date? Oh, oh I take it back. I do have one more thing. I propose to cancel the governance board meeting. And now I have to look at the calendar to see the exact date. It would no normally fall between the Christmas holiday and the New Year holiday. And I would like to be offline. Let's see, so that would be 26 December. Any objections yeah. from others of canceling that meeting? The week of Sounds 26 good. December. No, I'm fine with it. It also aligns with the postponement of the LTS release. So right. great. Okay, plus one Uli, plus one Alex, plus one Mark. That means we already have a majority. Good, all right. And it might be worth pushing the elections for the future back a bit because this means that there's only one official meeting for the new board before you go on hiatus. Oh, oh, so you meaning meaning next year, dis decide this, decide this thing in January. Well, I was saying uh, next year, instead of having the new board start uh, December 4th, have one meeting and then not have any more meetings. So January, it might be worth trying to see if the election ends earlier. So then you can have two full meetings, oh, one to get spun oh, up I and one to get just throwing okay. it out there. Good, good suggestion. All right. So. Um, maybe the plus one is uh, already wrong currently because uh, I and uh, Alex are not on the board yet. Oh, oh, right, right. So you're right. I should ask. Okay, Gavin, are you okay with canceling the board meeting that's scheduled for <laughs> December 22nd? I mean, sure. Okay. I mean, uh, it's not a meeting that I necessarily have to be at anymore. So. Right, exactly. Strange concept. And Basel and Bruno, I assume no objections from either of you. No, nope. no, no, of course not. Great. All right. Thank you. Okay. Next topic or anything else on governance board meeting time and date then? It's election and installation of new officers. Don't have 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 more than one one meeting. before end of year break. I mean, you could also change Christmas and end of year break. That would also work. Hmm. Okay. 
Yeah, fair enough. Next topic then, okay, CDF Outreach Reboot. This is just more for your information. December 14, uh, Lori LaRusso, uh, the, I believe she's the outreach leader at Continuous Delivery Foundation, is restarting the CDF outreach uh, effort. And uh, Alyssa Tong has agreed to be there and present for the Jenkins Project. I'll be there as well. Um, it, it's just getting started. Uh, Lori is actually with JFrog, and we've been working with her as well on the JFrog uh, contribution to cloud uh, to to Jenkins and how how we're adapting to needing to reduce bandwidth requirements there. So Lori's been a great help on that. We're very grateful to JFrog for her contribution. Uh, since Oleg's not here, I'd propose we skip CDF topics, and then the next would be community forum. Gavin. Yeah, I mean it's it's gonna it's pretty uh, support heavy last couple of weeks, uh, but there is the whole thread that various people have been. I accidentally typed the last one, but talking about how to get involved, um, it does sound like we get a lot of people asking that. So yeah, I don't know what to do with this one. Just it is. Well, and uh, actually, uh, John Mark John Mark Mason has prepared a boilerplate in the form of a blog post that he and I were going to propose we also use as a canned reply here on community with some suggestions and topics, things that can help people. Then this thing that I did here of, hey, here are plugins that have just been adopted. Diraj Joda, Diraj Singh Joda and I are trying this experiment where let's give them specific plugins and say, help with this plugin and let's see what that happens that way. Good. I've got some experiments I'm doing that are in the pipeline that could be part of this. Um, that basically, I think a big, a big suggestion. One of the most frequent suggestions that I see being given for people who want to get involved is to adopt a plugin and bring the plugin up to the modern standards of our build tool chain. And I think that that's a that's First of all, something that's very much needed um, to keep uh, to keep the plugin stable and building properly and tested properly, and it's it's also a great way for people to get involved if they are not involved. But I think one of the downsides to that suggestion is that it's a fairly specialized and difficult task that uh, requires a lot of um, domain-specific knowledge to. Um, to, for, for that task to be completed by people. It can be very challenging to figure out why something doesn't build properly on the latest POM if you're, if you're new to the community, because this is, I mean, even if you're familiar with Java development, there's a lot of things that are very specialized to the Jenkins plugin system that you have to figure out. And that takes a lot of time. And then once you learn it, you almost never need to use that knowledge again. So it's just, a very um, high investment and, and low reward um, scenario. So something that I have in the pipeline is finding ways to make that easier. I've been doing a lot of experiments about this. I um, have, have an idea of building a mono repo of the top 250 plugins um, that would be basically building against head all the time, against the latest versions of everything, not even the latest released versions, but just the latest commits on the main branch. And basically with that idea, that would that would make our pitch a lot more friendly to these newcomers because we could say, hey, instead of figuring out all of this arcane build knowledge that you never need to use again after this, just go and find what's being done in the mono repo and apply that into the plugin. So I think that, that to me is a much more uh, friendly message than, oh, you'd like to get involved? Okay, great. Start fixing build failures that very few people can figure out. <laughs> um, so I, I, think, I think that if I, if I, I've been kind of playing around with this, but I think that would be uh, a good step. And then obviously I've got much, much more 
um, grand plans, like automating some of this and then adding open rewrite to uh, to make it even fancier. But just just getting started with the mono repo to get the, the hard stuff out of the way, I think that would be a positive step in, in the sales pitch. Um, because that, that would transform the task from being, uh, hey, thanks for thanks for wanting to get involved. Now do something really hard. Now it's like, oh, you can do something of easy to medium difficulty, and then then you can do something. And and also, it's I think it's also good because if we give them the the fundamental knowledge to get the build up to date, um, then they can focus on something that they really want to do, like add a new feature, fix a bug, rather than something that probably very few people are interested in, which is working on builds. Um, so anyway, that's just a preview of what I've been working on. There's also um, triaging. I think there's, that's always gets uh, under under suggested. It's just look at open bugs and see if you can reproduce them and write up uh, notes about it. Uh, it could because it and we could highlight the fact that it gets you comfortable in using Jenkins, which means that making feature requests are a little bit easier. You actually know what people do with it. Good, yes. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, and I had a I had a good a really good personal experience with that one, with uh, a, a new contributor Jagruti who helped me with a very specific problem I was trying to duplicate on the Git plugin. She did a great job. Good good suggestion. Thank you. Anything else on the beginning? Yeah, there's, there's there's still a large number of Jira tickets with the UX untriaged label that we could point people to, and. Uh, the process for triaging them is somewhat laborious, but um, I have in the past offered to help people or to teach to teach people the process that I use, which is basically um, to use Git bisect um, coupled with interactive testing to find find the commit that introduced their aggression. So that that would be a great place for people to get involved in and. Uh, if, if there's questions about how to do that, I could definitely share the process I've been using. Good. I like that a lot. Let's move on. Yeah, next topic. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know what to title this one. Uh, there's just an ongoing discussion. Everyone has their opinion on spacing. And so this thread keeps going. Um, Uli's been doing a great job at managing and suggesting, but I figured it was a non-support request that I should mention. Yeah, that is. This is a good one. It's a, it's a good topic for ongoing discussion. I expect some more noise from the release this Wednesday because there's an accessibility improvement that makes one of the things that used to be a clickable link no longer a clickable link, and it it, it does improve accessibility. It was intentionally discussed carefully decided, but I'm expecting that there are going to be some users who say, hey, where's my click that I used to be able to click? Good. And then totally on a selfish, I love it thing, I included the newsletter because I'm very happy that it exists. So Alyssa has done a, oh, I pinned the wrong topic, oops, uh, uh, reach, uh, request to uh, anyone who wants to add anything to the November mailing list, there's a, an open post for it, and you know, I'll link to the past September and October newsletters. Yeah, so I and I owe, I owe for several, I'll, I'll get some submitted there. Thank you very much for starting that, and thanks to Alyssa for submitting it. Thanks also to Bruno. I believe, Bruno, you've been helping with getting the pull requests all the way to the Jenkins blog, right? Yeah, just a little bit, but yeah, great. Any other topics, Gavin? Nothing comes to mind. Um, I'm hoping the newsletter kind of replaces this whole section. So, yeah. Great. All right. And are there any other topics to bring to the to the board as a whole?
Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Thanks very much, everyone, for being here.